Hello guys from DN Models. Today we are building Mini Arts Panzer 3D kit number 35169. The tank was developed in 1930s as a medium tank and the first four versions A, B, C and D was pre-production versions, prototypes used different kinds of suspensions of which few was built. From A and B was built around 10 of each, C version was built in 15 examples and D which we are building today was built in around 30 pieces. All of them saw actions in Poland and D version saw some action in Poland and in Norway. The kit itself is very complex. It contains 1146 parts, 1064 of which are plastic parts, 71 are photo etched and 11 are clear parts. Although some of the parts are complex and they require attention, the fit is almost perfect and the new plastic material that Miniart used from 2015 on gives you great results with the assembly. The model itself is not suitable for beginner modelers, for intermediate and master modelers it's a perfect piece out of the box because it contains a lot of goodies as single track length which are similar if not better to aftermarket metal tracks and the only disadvantage compared to them is the fact that they don't have that weight. But You'll see that later on in the video. If you follow the instructions precisely and you pay a lot of attention, you'll note that there will be no big deal in assembling everything together and get on with the build as a breeze. Although, if you are not experienced, you might encounter some troubles, especially with the suspension, because it's pretty complex, as it was on the real tank as well. The fenders of the vehicle are really well detailed, with a lot of texture, and a lot of options to make them in different positions. They have photo edge parts and some attention is required there. However, as I said, if you're a bit experienced smaller, you have no problem whatsoever with the build.
photo edge itself it's pretty thin and flexible and requires you to be careful with it especially sanding it because it bends way too easy however this on the other hand means great detail and great bending opportunities for parts that need to be curved around the plastic. The only thing noted that needs a different type of treating was the upper part of the turret which needed some putty and that was it. The rest of the tank is nearly perfect and requires none additional measurements whatsoever. The track assembly is done with the plastic part which will help you aligning everything together and adding the two side pins pretty much the same as model casting tracks will give you the flexibility and the option to make the tracks in different positions and make them movable or just add only parts of them if you decide to make the vehicle ruined or damaged in any way. The pins that connect the track links does not require additional gluing. They sit together pretty tight and everything works as well without a drop of glue. The plastic part that it's used to align the tracks hold only few pieces of them and you gotta collect a couple pre-assembled parts which once put together will give you the full length of the track length. There are many additional track links and track pins so even if you break one or lose some you still have enough to complete the model. Once built, the track length is pretty movable and even if you don't glue the pins, it works quite well. The superstructure sub-assemblies are not complicated, but they have a lot of additional parts on themselves and you gotta be careful with putting them together. Once each sector is completed, building everything, gluing one piece to another, it's very easy. At first glance the fender looks like they won't go into their places but this is only a trick of the eye. Everything lies one to another with a wonderful fit. The whole sub-assembly requires only few drops of extra thin glue and in the end you get a wonderful piece of German World War II tank.
MiniArt is a company that usually thinks of the modeler and they put additional photo edge parts which are supposed to hold the rope and they are available as an option to be put or left behind because you can add an additional stowage over the rear part of the tank. The hull contains movable parts in terms of the gun and the machine guns. Within the interior in the turret, it's also an option. As you can see here, everything is installed. Very few of the details require additional sanding or preparation before assembly, but they are some that do. The antenna mount is positionable and we cut off the antenna in order to make an aftermarket or a scratch built one in the end. However, you can put it aside, lying down or in the up position. The upper and the lower part of the turret are with the great fit and they were left behind because of the painting the interior. It's a tricky job and needs a lot of space. A few drops of putty was needed in the front part of the tank because the plastic was damaged upon opening the box. It could have been left as it is, however we decided to fix it in order to make the tank look more new and not so used. Priming the vehicle was done in two stages. The interior of the tanks, usually it's white and we used a white primer as a base for it.
for the exterior we are using black primer because the vehicle is supposed to be a bit darkish and the black primer is the perfect base for that. In both cases using white and black primer we are using AK primers which are nice and they give you a subtle finish over the whole vehicle. These primers does not require additional dilution and they are airbrushed straight out of the bottle. The pressure required is around 16 psi or less. Once everything gets a completed look, we stop with the primer. Next are the tracks. They are painted, not primed, because the primer usually clogs the holes and prevents the free movement of the tracks. They are painted in two colors. First one is dark tracks and the second one is rust tracks. That gives an additional shading and draws the attention to the modulation of the coloring. It is essential to cover all the tracks pretty well, although some spots even left as the original color may represent dusted areas or dry mud areas. Painting the tank starts with a darkish shade of gray. First it's applied a thin layer barely to cover the primer. The second layer is with added white and a few drops of a diluter. The second layer is with more thick coverage in order to get the whole thing looks more complete. After that, few drops of white and some dilution and couple of more layers in order to get the shades and modulation. To get the proper shading you need time, thus chipping with hairspray it's not recommended. You gotta be careful to paint the turret as well as the hull in the same color because sometimes modulating one over the other creates a difference in shades. Before finishing the painting process, we spray highly diluted mist of the leftover of the paint over the whole tank to blend everything together. Although the decals look quite promising and they look very thin, we decided to go with the DN model's mask as we do on most of our models. They are very flexible, easy to use and in the version that we decided to make 
there were only three crosses to paint so that was a definite decision to change the decals with mask stencils. The stencils are reusable and can be used on several models. As you see some additional masking might be needed and this is only because there is no need for overspray of the white paint over the whole model. Working with the mask is very fast and it gives you a lot of options replicating the exact technique used in the real vehicle from the soldiers. Before assembling upper and lower part of the turret, we need to do one more thing, and that is painting the interior. Not many interior photos can be found on the internet, however, those we found showed that there are black or brown seats, and we decided to go with both. Some corrections are needed because painting with the paintbrush is not that easy. Painting in different colors inside creates additional attraction and once the viewer looks at the vehicle it's usually more likable and easy to comprehend. bags that hold the ammunition or the rest of it are painted also in two colors the big one is green I saw in some of the reference picture and other two are painted in the sail color both colors are very easy to be treated with oils afterwards and once washed they appear very different and realistic If you do not apply some chipping over the edges, the turret usually looks very new and unused, which is quite unrealistic. Chipping process is slow, you gotta use the thinnest brush possible and you gotta take your time. Taking your time usually helps noticing some area missed or some that needs more attention or needs to be left untouched. Chipping is followed 
with a wash which helps spreading the liquid over the chips and around them which creates additional interesting effect. Accumulated wash needs to be cleaned. Once everything looks equal, you can proceed with the streaking effect. Streaking usually is done with oils applied randomly on some parts, which streak effects can be noted on the real vehicle. Blending everything together is essential for the final appearance of the interior. Being painted white, it's a tricky color and it's hard to work with. With enough attention and patience, everything can be achieved inside of the tank. Gluing the upper and lower part of the turret gotta be done with the thinnest glue possible. You gotta touch here and there, just like welding some parts apart one from another to not let the glue spread out and ruin the paint. While everything settles down, some dry brushing over the tracks is made using Vallejo Silver and Metalizer Oil Paints, whichever your preference is. Using white spirit and oil paints, in this case a bit of blue and a bit of grey, created a filter to cover all of the tank and blend everything together. The filter goes just like if you put your sunglasses on and changes the whole appearance of the visible parts of the tank and helps you create additional effect. In terms of using blue creates unconscious effect of cold looking parts, in this case cold looking vehicle. Two different pigments are used for the first pigment layers under the fenders. This is only the beginning. Once you apply the pigments and you mix them together, achieving desirable color, you fix them with the pigment fixer which is stronger than the white spirits and hold them together just like they were glued. After fixing the first layer of pigments, tracks are assembled. This is done because the tracks need to be there because after putting the tracks you cannot reach most of the surfaces behind and beneath them. Once everything is set together, it's time for streaking on the outside. Painting tank in dark grey means that the streaking effects should be light replicating mud and light dust. This is the only thing visible on the dark vehicle. They are done with oils and then cleaned with the white spirit dipped brush cleaned off of the white spirit and then use to absorb some of the oil and blend the rest. Everything must be done with intuition and gotta be monitored carefully in order to not leave some parts underpainted or leave some overpainted which is very easy. Once the weathering begins 
it's very easy to lose the track of it and go further than needed. Using dotting technique over flat surfaces, it's also nice and creates dust effects like spreaded dust or leftovers of water stains and similar weathering. Next technique used, usually it is a wash. Wash is created with the buff, replicating the dust effect. Putting the wash with the longer brush, holding more of the liquid, helps letting it spread it out over the angles using capillary action, and that helps create more natural effect. Using a couple of different washes create additional attraction and makes look everything more realistic. Next step is sponge technique. This is a very old and reliable method of applying small chips over the tank. You can use either paint, which is acrylic, or oil. The chipping should be applied randomly and using different angles of the sponge to not repeat itself. Welding marks are pointed out with a graphite or a pencil. Both cases it works fine, creating an illusion for a metal. Dry brushing method is used randomly, usually over the sprockets or idlers. Some of the tracks, machine guns and parts that you want to do appear metal. The exhaust of the tanks usually are very rested and in order to create that effect we use pastels. The pastels are more sticky than the pigments and we rub them with the stiff dry brush into the muffler and then fix everything with white spirit. Additionally, you can always use AK or MIC or whatever company rust effect. Light and rust effect can be applied over the pigments and then blended out with the white spirit. Light rust effects are used where angles or tricky places where accumulating rust is visible on the real vehicles. You gotta be careful to not overdo it or if you do to cover it with pigments afterwards because it's very easy to lose yourself using that technique.
same as the previous times, you gotta clean the excess with the moist brush. Mixing different shades of pastels along with pigments is our preferable method of applying dust. Pigments are not that sticky, although the pastels are, and blend them together gives you the perfect combination of a weathering powder, which gently applied over the tank gives you realistic effect of dust or sand. Because of the stickiness of the pastels, white spirit is not needed to fix them in most of the cases. This is the perfect technique of blending everything together starting with the wheels, sprockets, tracks and continuing upwards. Going upwards, the pigments applied are less and less because the accumulation of dirt and dust is mostly visible on the bottom parts of the tanks. Next is a sprinkle effect using wash or premixed oils. You gotta reload the brush of the sprinkles and when you get the desired amount of sprinkles to sprinkle or everything, you want to blend together. Even if you miss a spot with the previous stages of weathering, sprinkling effect usually covers it, creating a trick to the eye, making it look as a one whole piece. Using one or more different sprinkle colors is recommended. After everything is completed, once again we are repeating the action with the pigments and pastels to cover some of the spots with additional dust. Sometimes only just a few touches change the appearance of the whole thing. Once built, the whole thing looks like this.
the very last thing to do is to add the antenna. To use an aftermarket antenna or a scratch built one is a matter of preference. In this case we are using guitar string with a medium thickness a bit thinner than the plastic one to add a real metal antenna. If you work every day the whole builds should take less than a month. I hope you enjoyed our video, thanks to MiniArt for providing us with this wonderful kit which is perfect for out of the box built and suitable for intermediate to experienced modelers. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you like it, leave a comment down below. See you in the next one.